Well, so this is the legendary Muir Trail Ranch. Open eight to five. So right here is where you kind of dive through your resupply bucket and pull out what you don't want and you leave it on all these little buckets. So these are, these are just some of the cans. Toilet paper, lots of that. Batteries, no can batteries. Fuel cans, not empty. Toiletries. Bug spray, sunscreen, boy. Oh, the bug, bug spray. First aid. Gear. Oh, some kind of round gear. Clean plastic bag. Clothing. Oatmeal, everybody sits for oatmeal. Home pack of twos. Okay. So there is spring water here at least. So there's potable water. And there's a shake house store. So it has like clothing and little patch kits, Purell, Dr. Bronner's. Hats. Like some first aid stuff. And that's about it. And they have lots of these little cabins you can stay at. You'd think they'd make a fortune selling cold beer here. I mean, it'd be, I, I'd pay 10 bucks for one bottle. So leaving MTR, that was weird. <laughs> um, it's the first time I felt like cheap, hi cheap hiker trash. In one way, I am flattered. You think I'm hiker trash? That's so sweet. Are you trying to be nice? You're just saying that. Because <laughs> I aspire to become hiker trash. It's one of my goals. <laughs> but it's weird. It's, it's like, take your bucket and go. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no food, no beer. And we're saying that the reason they don't sell beer is probably because if you sell beer to hikers, they'll never leave. It's like rodents or, <laughs> you know, termites. So they do have some water. There's no bathrooms. They won't let you camp close to it. They don't want you to leave the hiker area because, oh, you know, all those dirty, dirty uh, just dirty hikers trying to, trying to talk to our guests. This is weird. I don't know. Whatever. We got our stuff. My pack weighed out at 33 pounds. Resupply, we're about five days of food. So here we go back to the PCT which I feel like that's home um, anyway. We don't need their stinking ranch. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about it, and we were thinking that that uh, MTR was more like uh, just, just Kennedy Meadows. Kennedy Meadows uh, was great. If you were a, a just PCT hiker, you camp for free. They have a pit toilet. I mean, you know, there's, there's no water, but it's a nice, nice campground. Uh, they have a cute little beer garden. They have a nice little hot dog stand. Um, in the store, they have ice cream bars and cold soda and stuff like that. I mean, beer. And we we didn't see a lot of drunken PCT hikers around. Come on, you know, people are on the on the road. They got things to do. But boy, MTR is the exact opposite of all that. All the pass this way. Oh, thank God, back on the on the PCT. That climb out of MTR was as steep as any pass we've done. I mean, straight up the fall line. So we're going to try to walk until 5.30 today. And then uh, see where we are.
Wow, so that was a 2,000 foot climb out of Muir Trail Ranch to Sanger Creek. So that's over 2.1 miles, so 1,000 feet a mile. Woof. Uh, so we're going to walk another mile or so. There's some more campsites up there. Of course, you know, the usual afternoon gloominess, thunder, lightning. It's very, very frightening. Well, good morning. So this is the site we stayed in last night. We had all the our Korean friends that stay up there, and a couple more people stayed over here. Uh, we're going to go to Sally Keys Lake t today, then Selden Pass, then down the backside of Selden Pass. Um, I'm watching my battery uh, percent, so I won't be doing as, as many videos. So this is Sally Keys Lake. Big. Pretty. I like it. So this is the top of Selden Pass. Boy, it went fast. It took us an hour and 50 minutes from our camp at 10,100 to get to the summit. There's our Korean friends. Beautiful lakes. Down, down, down. down. The dreaded Bear Creek. Today it's only about knee high at about 11.48. So this is our campsite here by Mono Falls. Very cute. Beautiful morning. Gonna go climb Silver uh, Pass today. Uh, 2,900 feet. Uh, fun. So this is Mono Creek Falls. Very cool. I'm gonna walk along the rock. And the forest worker. So if I had to guess, that's Silver Pass. There's a trail, and I assume it goes in and over. Just sort of going up there somewhere. So this looks promising. Maybe come into the pass. I think so. Cloudy day, good day for climbing. So this looks like the top. Silver Pass. And of course there's snow. Looks like people made a path going around this. See the trail right there. So down, down, down we go. That took almost five hours, over six miles. 3,000 feet. Fun, baby. So that was the trail coming down. We didn't feel good about that, so we went around these rocks. You can see some people tried it. I, that's about a 30 degree or 40 degree slope. No thanks. So we walked on the other side of this ridge from uh, to Silver Pass down into the valley down in there. We walked up. We're, we were down at that river level. And coming up all this way, man, like 1,200 feet, woof. So it's going to be like a 4,200 foot elevation day. So this was our campsite at, at Virginia Lake. Very pretty. The full moon last night and the moon was beautiful on, on the lake. And then the, we walked on this little trail to get water. Beautiful morning. A lot of clouds for the morning. So this is Purple Lake. So we're on the road to Mammoth. So we, so we slept last night at 10,500. I believe Red's Meadow was at 7,700. So somehow we need to scrub off 2,800 feet. And this is what we're doing, going down, down, down. Which is nice. After a 4,200 foot climb yesterday, climbing day, it's nice to go down.
beautiful morning. And someone was kind enough to build a little bridge here going across the Purple Lake outlet. Very thankful. More Purple Lake. Nice. Two logs cut down flat. On the PCT, heading towards Mammoth Mountain. We're getting closer because everybody who passes us coming from there smells good. <laughs> that, that must show you we're getting close to civilization. Still on the road to Red Meadow, but isn't this pretty? Been kind of following the contour line for probably the last 45 minutes or so. That's okay. So if people are wondering what kind of, of equipment people are using on the PCT JMT, about 90. 90% of the packs have been uh, Osprey or Gregory, high volume, high weight, I guess 40 pounds, 45 pounds. Uh, saw three ULAs and one guy had a Z pack back, back on. So um, not very many people are into the ultralight thing here. I picture him just going to REI and saying, well, I'm going to go, go and hike. Uh, you, what do you got? <laughs> so, so. So then, what kind of people are out on the trail, or age groups, or I, I'd say at least 80% of the people that pass us are women. Uh, of that 80%, a good 75% are probably 35 years or younger, and then of them, most of them are probably between the ages of 24 to 30, somewhere in there. So I get Backpacker magazine every month, and as I recall, the ads seem to be either gender neutral or geared towards men. I think they've got that all backwards. They need to be running ads for women's backpacks, women's boots, women's skirts, women's tops. I think they got that, that uh, demographic all, all, all wrong. Boy, the trail from um, Virginia Lakes down has been so sweet. There was a little bit of a climb out of, out of Virginia Lakes, a little bit of climb out of Purple Lake, but man, so nice. It's like this is the is the PCT and the JMT is about like from Muir Pass on where you just get pounded. And again, thank you, PCT Trail Crew. Wow. Blow down alley. So, Horseshoe Lake. Uh, last year, about this time, we came down here for a day hike. And boy, it's such a long walk to get to the PCT that we got right down to here and you can only walk about a little bit further before we had to turn around. And I was saying to my wife, next year, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to walk all the way down. <laughs> Bye, guy. Here I am, look at me, walking down to Red's Meadow on the PCT. So Mammoth has these things called red cones, which are, I guess, old, vol old volcanoes, which are really cool. More of the PCT. Just seen from the trail. You can go see way down there. Just pictures from the, P from the PCT. Oh, it's 
so cute. Cute little deer. It's like a little fawn with mama. Still coming up on the Red Meadow. There's a large burn zone right, right there, and, and, and as you can see, a couple of people hiking. So, another mile to go. Now, burn areas are weird. It's like a nuclear blast. Coming up on two sides. Red's Meadow Resort, PCT North. This way. Lots of little pack stations. Red's Meadow pack station. Hey, look, there's the shuttle. That takes back to our little Jeep. So that was weird. That's the first time <laughs> coming out of the woods that I've seen asphalt or motorized vehicles or electric lights or non-hiker people. Uh, so it's like, boom! <laughs> Give me a little bit of warm-up. Uh, that, that was strange. There were no other hikers except my wife and I on that bus and the bus was full, crowded. <laughs> I can imagine we smell and look a mess. I don't know, it was, it was just weird. Um, it makes you see how fast we can adapt to just being in woods. All I know is I felt uh, very at home in the woods, but I didn't feel at home on that bus, man. Boy, that, that was just like strange. <laughs>